Well, I'm Gil Gullickson. I'm the Crops Technology Editor for Successful Farming Magazine, and we're on the Tools for the Future tour here at Living History Farms in Clive, Iowa. And I have with me Charlie Schaefer from AgriDrain, who's going to talk about some new drainage technology that that company has been working on. Thanks, Gil. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here. This is a great event. It's uh, wonderful to get a chance to see some of the other technologies that are available here for the ag producer and, and to make environmental impacts and also to get to showcase some of our products and, and the practices that those products can make possible. So uh, maybe I just, if it's okay, walk through uh, some of these images here that show some of the concepts that we support in terms of subsurface water management. You know, uh, with the price of land these days, and the, the value of the commodity crops that, uh, that our producers raise, there's a lot of concern about taking some of the variability and some of the risk out of the system, and so drainage is a great way to do that. But we also recognize that on occasion, nutrients can flow with those drainage waters, and sometimes more water than we really want to leave the system does so during the growing season. So what we support is a concept called drainage water management, and we manufacture products that are used in these practices. They are NRCS approved practices, and so there's financial assistance available for them, but it's a very simple concept. In the winter time, when we don't need drainage, about half the water that typically leaves the system does so during that fallow season. So, so we suggest you just, if you've got an annual or a water level control structure that's manual or automatic, that you can just raise the water level in the soil profile above the tile line and reduce the outflow from that system and this can result in as much as 50 to 60 percent of overall annual reduction in outflow and then in the spring when you get ready to go back in you want that drainage system to draw down the water to warm the soil to, to encourage root growth you would you'd lower the water level down to as much as down to the flow line do your field work your planting activities and then in the summertime you can very well come back in and, and raise that water level back up, conserve some of the nutrients in the water to make them available for the crop during the growing season. Certainly if you get a rainfall event, you also have a tendency to hold that water back and store it. And in the fall, drain it back down again for your, your fall field work and, and whatever tillage operations you intend to do and go back into your winter mode. So it's a pretty simple regime if you've got a manual structure. There's literally about four times of the year you have to come back in and change these things. And we've seen like I mentioned, about 50% reduction in nutrient transport. Given the right rainfall patterns, a little bit of luck, farmers always rely on some of that. Uh, you can see as much as a uh, 10, 15% yield bump, sometimes more, but if you expect an average over the course of maybe 10 years, five to 10%, something in that range. Uh, we also manufacture automatic water level control structures, so like any other technology here, you can get about as sophisticated as you want to get in terms of remote sensing and management, monitor water levels, flow rates, things like that. Part of what we believe will occur in the future is the development uh, of environmental markets, and so producers will actually get incentivized to install practices that will improve water quality and reduce nutrient, nitrogen, phosphorus transport, make those offsets available to public utilities and permitted facilities to hold down their cost of compliance with their NPDES permits and so that will incentivize producers to install conservation practices that won't necessarily create an on-farm agronomic benefit but a downstream environmental benefit. They'll improve water quality in the watershed and hold down compliance cost for those utilities and those permitted facilities. So we think that's a great opportunity for everybody involved.